the vision of a simultaneous world revolution is, is mere escapism. It is still tacitly functioning, even though we no longer use the words uh, simultaneous world revolution. Hart and Negri's global revolt of the multitude is an example. They seem to think that nation states are virtually in, insignificant inside of the empire or global capitalism, and the, the multitude will counteract empire. By multitude, they mean uh, various human groups such as minorities, immigrants, aborigines. Um, the multitude is not confined to the uh, working class. But Hart and Negri's vision is similar to that of Marx and Proudhon around 1848. In fact, Hart and Negri themselves note that what Marx called the proletariat should not be confined to the working class in the narrow sense, but should be taken to be very close to what they call the multitude. In that sense, Hart and Negri are advocating a simultaneous world revolution by the multitude, if not by the proletariat. Such revolts might break out here and there, and they would soon be divided by the state. And in the face of the anarchic eruption of uh, violence, people would demand security and the monop monopoly of uh, violence by the state, uh, <clears throat> further reinforcing the state's power. Accordingly, this would result in fortifying the capital nation state. This applies to the simultaneous world revolution of the past. For instance, uh, far from overthrowing the state, the state and capitalism, the revolution of 1848 resulted in establishing an advanced version of capital nation state. As I mentioned before, Bonaparte in France, the Bismarck in Prussia, uh, advanced the state-initiated uh, industrial capitalism along with welfare and social policies, and these led, led to imperialism before long. In talking about uh, empire, Hart and Negri only have the empire of capital in mind. This is to reduce the question of the state to the matter of economy. Uh, <clears throat> in other words, they reduce the different mode of exchange to commodity exchange. But their vision can never take place in reality. No matter how much the capitalist economy may deepen, the state will remain, and so will the nation. In short, the capital nation state will remain. Without understanding these difficulties, the revolt of the multitude will lead only to a consolidation of the state rather than its abolition. Uh, we are confined in the Brahmin ring of a capital nation state, uh, social democracy, which in sum to regulate capitalism and redistribute wealth by, of, by way, way of parliamentary democracy is not free from this. More often than not, it falls into chauvinistic nationalism. In order to get out, get out of this closure, counter movement against the state and capitalism in each nation uh, 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 <coughs> necessary. Concretely, what is needed uh, is to create a non-capitalist alternative economy based upon reciprocal exchange and raise it to the level of a, a transnational network without depending on the state. But uh, if this movement lies above a certain level, they are certain to face dis disruption by the state and capital. The, the transnational networks would be blocked and uh, divided. Therefore, side by side with such counter movement against states from inside or below, counter movement from outside or above are necessary at the same time. Uh, to uh, repeat once again, the state cannot be overcome only from within or from below. below. For the state exists against other states, enemies. 
It is just as impossible to abolish one state alone. We cannot count on a simultaneous world revolution or anything like, like that either. What else is possible then? <laughs>